The man is wanted in reference to a murder on K Street in Macon. The deputies are looking for 38-year-old Derek Booz. He has multiple warrants out for his arrest, including one for aggravated assault, family violence, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Investigators want to talk to Booz about a shooting that left 30-year-old Lasmaki Fountain dead. She was found Saturday morning around 6.30 in her grandmother's backyard on K Street. She had a gunshot wound to her head. Just a very tragic and, uh, and a very sad situation for, for all the, uh, the, the victim, of course, herself, the family and friends of the victim. The warrants for Booz were issued on May 13th. Anyone with information about his location is asked to call the Bibb County Sheriff's Office. That number is 478-751-7500. Okay, uh, at about 6.30 a.m. this morning, the Bibb County Sheriff's Deputy responded to uh, a call of a person down at 3565 K Street. Uh, when deputies arrived on the scene, they did find a uh, female, uh, Mrs. Maki, found uh, 30 years of age, was found unresponsive in the backyard. It appeared she had a gunshot wound to the head. Um, the uh, investigators in the crime scene are on the scene now, processing the scene, still gathering information. Um, but, but yeah, we do know that she, she did get back in town last night, and uh, we're staying here with her relatives. And uh, you know, once we can release more information on this, we will. But right now, it's in the early stages of the investigation. Hey, everybody, it's Cheryl. I'm. Uh, I got a video I want to. I got something I want to talk to y'all about that um, is a touchy subject. Initially, um, I had an earlier video where I was talking to you about the Memorial Day weekend and what it meant for me because I'm missing so many people in my family. My father uh, died of lung cancer in 2008. I have another brother that I haven't talked about much, Ronnie, my baby brother. Uh, was lost in 2003. So I had made a video talking about them and I was like, no, you can't do that. People get tired of you and your sadness. The intent is not to make you feel sorry for me, but it's to let you know these things happen. So I'm going to start with a phone call I got this morning from my daughter. I've gotten these phone calls before and when you get them things don't register to you you don't I've gotten a phone call before telling me somebody's dead and I can hear it but my brain doesn't absorb what it's what's being said so my daughter called me and she says smock is dead smock is dead and I said what you say she says smock is dead I said I tell you what you come over here you, you just get in the car and you come over here. So I sat there for a few minutes and I tried to call my one of my sisters and she wouldn't answer the phone. And, and I was just crying. So, but I, through my tears, I was able to Google the name. And I found a little 30-year-old girl whose family lived on the same street that my family lived on for about 30-something. Well, the, my family stayed there about 25 or more years. So my nieces and nephews and my sisters and the girl that passed and her mother, all of them grew up around each other. Um, after my family, you know, we, we moved away, then other people on the street moved away as well. Okay. Before I get into that, I'm going to tell you something about me. One day, I get a call from my best friend since college. Crying. What's wrong with you? I just had this horrible dream, Cheryl. Please, what are you, what are you doing? Why are you home? And I was like, well, I, I just didn't want to go to work tonight. I worked for the railroad, and my schedule was 1030 to 6 in the morning, uh, Wednesday through Sunday. So... I should have been at work when she called, but I wasn't. And she said, I just had this dream. I was standing over your grave, me and your mama and your daughter, just crying and just asking you, why? So I was like, what are you, you know, what are you talking about? She said, you know what I'm talking about. At the time, I was dealing with somebody who did not like me. 
Love ain't even a question. He didn't like me. And it wasn't until I ended up with broken bones, all my money being taken, the police, the drug police feeling sorry enough to give me back my car that this person had taken and got caught with drugs in it. It was that didn't stop me. It wasn't until I the broken bones and the, the, the when the police up there saying, We're gonna protect you. We know he did this to you. And I protected him. Only to get out, have surgery for those broken bones, and the man come in the hospital room and take my pocketbook and all my money. I mean it wasn't even that that stopped me. The little girl that my daughter called me about this morning had been trying to get away from her killer. She taken out a restraining order. She left town. She had done everything she could do to get this man out of her life. She didn't try to protect him. She didn't try to help him. She told him to get gone, but he wouldn't leave her alone. <clears throat> so this morning at, excuse me, 530, the grandmother, 83 years old, hears gunshots. The child had just come back to town last night. He managed to get into the house. force the child outside, make her take off her clothes, and shoot her in her head. All because she didn't want him. That's not love, honey. That's crazy. When somebody feels that they have the right to beat you and take your life because the other person does not want to be in a relationship any longer. We went to see the family. Grandmother was sitting in the yard. She was in a wheelchair. She couldn't see me. But when she heard my voice and I said who I was, you know, she was so help glad that we had come. Um, some of the aunts were there. The child's mother was so overcome with grief, she was in the hospital. When um, It was a very sad state of affairs, and I was worried about the young men in the area, this they didn't they no longer lived on the street where everybody grew up together. They were living a couple of streets over. So I asked my daughter to take me back to the old neighborhood so I could see how I know that um well the, the young lady leaves behind four children and I know that the father of uh, her girls lived on um, on the street that we had no longer lived on. So I go over there hoping to minister to the guys, you know, to tell them you know, don't don't try to do anything about this. Let God work this out. My nephews were over there. Other children that I had seen throughout my life. And I uh, I couldn't say what I wanted to say. I just told them that if they needed anything. That I would do whatever I could for them. I told everybody how sorry I was. And we made our way out of there. Now when we drove up in there. They didn't recognize my daughter's car. So initially they wouldn't let us come down the street but I guess when they saw who we were I rolled down the window and I saw my nephew and I saw my other niece had come over there too I want to tell you it was like um, I don't even know how to describe it um, the sadness and the anger was palpable you know I could taste it I could feel it It's just horrible. 
you got a girl somewhere in your life or a, a young man who's being mistreated by some other man, a lady who's being treated, anybody who's being mistreated by their partner, wife, lover, or husband, I urge you to speak to them. You can't stop it now, but you just need to let them know that they're loved and that they have some worth. I ask you to lift the Fountain family up in prayer. This girl did everything she could to keep herself safe. And this fool felt he ultimately had the right to her life. Um, I just felt the need to share this experience with you. What she went through, what I went through.